I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Church in New Hampshire. A year ago, uh, the Episcopal churches in the United States and in Central America and into Asia have gathered for our triennial general convention in Austin, Texas. And on the 4th of July, Independence Day, we traveled to Taylor, Texas, to the T. Don Hutu, what's called the Family Residential Center. The Family Residential Center, which we soon discovered was an Orwellian turn of phrase. It is a detention center. It's a prison. It's a privately run prison. T. Don Hutu, I realize, is not uh, a name of a national hero or civil servant, but a CEO of a corporation. He runs a chain. He ran a chain of prisons. This was at the beginning, the very beginning of this crisis. And I had no belief, reason to believe, I just couldn't believe that we would still be in this crisis and it's only been exacerbated, it's only gotten far worse exponentially. That day we were there, it was a very hot day in Texas, in Taylor. Hundreds of us, a thousand or two of us gathered outside of its razor wire gates and we, we could only get to by, uh, about as close as I am as we are to the state house because there are there's pavement and there are several barricades and razor wire preventing us from there. The windows were small slivers, just slits in the poured concrete walls. And behind those windows, behind that, that castle, were mothers who had been separated from their children, hundreds of them. We came there to tell them as we've heard before, we see you. Te vemos. Te vemos. We see you. We see you. And through those windows, we could only see sheets of paper, just like this, moving up and down, up and down. That was all they could do to respond in gratitude for our seeing them. That was it. We can hear their voices couldn't see their faces. All we could see are these thin pieces of paper going up and down. We left singing, hoping that this would end soon. It hasn't. Now we hear graphic and see graphic images that touch all of our senses. Olfactory senses. We hear about the stench within those cages that children have to put up with, the fact that they cannot touch each other. They cannot really address each other freely. This is a horrible, horrible crime. This is a moral injury that is being inflicted on not only on those children, God bless them, especially those children, but also on us. We, this, these United States of America, are being injured by this. Will we recover? I'm not so sure. One text of many that both Jews and Christians share is a prophecy from the prophet Isaiah. It composes, it comprised the first sermon of Jesus when he got up in a synagogue in Capernaum. And he stood up and he opened the scroll and he read, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and I was going to stop there but there's another verse the day of vengeance of our God I don't preach judgment I strive to embody and preach love forgiveness and mercy but after this moral injury, this crime, I saw a sign. Where is it? Where is it? God, are you there? I saw it earlier. Are you there, God? It's you, us. It's us, America, land of the imprisoned, home of the privileged. 
Tevemos, we see them behind those walls, but God sees us. The world is now watching us, and they see what is being revealed, our hypocrisy, our moral failure, our lack of nerve, our unfaithfulness to each other. Te vemos? If God sees us, I actually am afraid. May God have mercy on us. That's my prayer. Thank you.